Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours again with me Colin and I think this is the third one in the Bob Ross series and this is called In the Midst of Winter. I've stretched the paper and which is just basically wetting it both sides with a brush and I'm just removing any excess water off from around the edge it's just underneath the lip of the paper and then we'll begin. This is a mixture of crimson and Naples yellow. I'm just going to put a, a little pink glow in the sky. And as we don't use liquid white um, like Bob does, to get the paint to thin we use other colours to take the place of the liquid white. Cobalt blue and French ultramarine with a little burnt sienna in it. And I've dried off round where the uh, cabin is as I really don't want, I want to keep that clean for the moment. Just bringing these two together. Remember, it will dry lighter. And if you're enjoying this series of videos, uh, please click the like button and subscribe, as I believe it helps with the algorithm that YouTube and Google have running. I'm going to take a little of that colour again. And I really am just going to put the path in. And did you notice when I set off from the back and I push the paint forward? It starts to fade off as the brush runs out of paint. As the water thins it out, to strengthen up the front. One or two areas. This is a, a darker mixture for a little cloud of the original mix. This is French Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue and Burnt Sienna. And it just adds a little variation in the sky. Now we need this to dry off a little bit. Welcome back, I've let this dry off for about uh, five or six minutes and the shine is beginning to disappear off the paper. So we'll put the background trees in and the reason why I waited is that I do want this, I do not want this, sorry, to explode all over and spread too far. And I don't want to cover up all the pink And then we can leave this to dry once again and then we can begin to put the background fir trees in. Okay, I think that's dry enough now. So what I'll just do is I'll put the tops of these fir trees in using a rigger brush. This is a mixture of French ultramarine, cobalt blue, burnt sienna and a little bit of crimson. And I'm just at the top pulling the tops of these trees out using the rigger brush because it just leaves a little bit more detail than using a larger brush as these really aren't too far away. Just make them all different heights. I'm trying to get a point on these. Then moving to my smaller gold hair mop brush with the same mixture too much paint on the brush. And very gently just touch the painting. Try not to overwork this. Painting around your barn. Adding a little more at the bottom. And taking some of that colour and just gently pulling it into this back field. <clears throat> and taking a damp brush. <clears throat> what I mean with a damp brush is this is fully loaded with water. Take all the excess water from it, wipe it on a, a towel, a cloth. 
and then we can soften the edges in. Just keep reloading the brush with water and taking the excess off. Just do a little at a time. And once again, we have to leave this to dry. Okay, the background trees are now dry. And what I'm gonna do, being this is a watercolor, and that we don't put dark over light, so we have to plan a little ahead. So if there's a highlight, to put that in first. So what I'm gonna do is just put some cobalt blue into this tree. And when I darken up around it, these will show out as a highlight. Maybe some on here. Always put more in than you actually need because when you put the dark on you will lose quite a bit of it and it's easier to add dark than it is to add the light. I just want to come round to the farm building, the barn, and I'm just going to wet just the roof area on both these buildings. And then once again I'm just taking some cobalt blue and I'm going to start at the bottom, very weak this, and just flick it up. Just leaving the top edge of these roofs, of this roof, sorry, white so as to stand out. And I'm going to leave the top part of this roof in shadow on this side. And maybe just run a couple of spots along here. So we're just going to let this dry off just a little bit more so we can then carry on. <clears throat> now that this is dried off a little bit somewhat, uh, we can move back into the trees here and with a stronger version of the Cobalt Blue French Ultramarine Burnt Sienna and Crimson. can start to put the shadow area of these trees in. Cobalt Blue French Ultramarine and Sepia with just a little bit of crimson in. Just to bring this colour deeper, take the tops of the trees out. Moving back to the goat head mop brush once again, same colour. Bringing the two trees together. Just adding a little stronger colour to walk towards the bottom where it would shadow up. And maybe just a tiny bit in here whilst this is still damp. <clears throat> and then while the bottom of these trees are still wet, I'm just going to re wet this snowy patch area. And I'm going to move the water gently towards the trees and we'll pull out the shadow. Just taking a little excess moisture off. Once again, just a little stroke of the odd cobalt blue, just pulling it back. Just leaving some light patches. Just going to re wet this area around here as well, moving it up to where. Our second fir tree is well, uh, the one in the middle ground, probably I should say. And then we're just going to do the same thing with this, just catch the bottom and just pull it into the ground. Once again, just a, a couple of shots of cobalt blue, 
just soften the edges then. I think while we're here, we'll manage to put this snow bank in as well. I don't want too much of this. This is just some of the sky colour, cobalt blue, Prince Marine, with just a little bit of burnt sienna in it. Picking a damp brush once again. Just soften these in. Softening the edges down. Pulling the shadow into the snow and then we're going to leave this to dry off a little bit more. I'm just going to re-wet the whole of the barn area now that everything has dried. And then into that some Naples yellow and burnt sienna. I'm just going to add this in. Just take that off. Being careless. Mark in the door area and on this side. This is also uh, this is uh, French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. This is on the brown side, and I'm also just going to drop some colour in. This is the same colour again, but this has more. French Ultramarine in it. Just pulling down and downward strokes and taking a damp brush once again. Just soften it in. And what I want to do now is I want to, while I've got the time, while we're waiting for the, the barn to dry out, we can put these trees in. These are birch trees in winter. So I'm going to leave some snow on them. Just a little broken edge up there. A little more careful. Aren't I? Once again taking a damp brush. Just soften some of this in. This is a mixture of cobalt blue, French and marine and sepia. As Bob would say, we'll just kick in my little foots. Still softening up the tree trunks. trees to the ground by using a, f a faded edge. Same colour but I've just uh, moved on to my rigger brush and we're just going to put a few branches in. As the paint creeps down again, just re soften it. And now we're going to have to leave this to dry and then we'll finish the barn off. Now that your barn's dry, we can begin to detail it out uh, with the same dark colour mixed French Ultramarine Cobalt Blue and Sepia with a touch of crimson in it. We can start to pull the dark shadows out. So there'll be a shadow under this eave here. Just put a little shadow under here. Once again, just softening the lines off. Then with a small rig of brush, we can start to put the planking in of uh, 
just an indication of a few broken lines. Just taking the same colour once again. Once we just fill in the barn door. I've left it patchy like that because I want to put a bit of interest in it. So once again with a damp brush, just begin to soften the edges down. If you soften the edges at the bottom, what you will notice is that the transition from the snow to the barn is not as harsh as if you put a straight line in there with a solid block of colour. It would make the barn look as if it was actually stuck onto the picture, of which it isn't. You want it to be part of the picture. Also just waiting for that to dry at the moment, we can come back to the path uh, with a few strokes. The sky colour, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. We can begin to pull the path out a little bit. Again with a damp brush, soften the edges down, then soften the top edge into the barn. Soften the path in, using clean water all the time. And do you notice how the harsh edges are disappearing? and becoming darker as you come forward. And then with a very, very weak wash of the same colour, you watered down, or I watered it down. We can put just a glaze of this colour, cobalt blue, French ultramarine, and burnt sienna. Just a touch of crimson in. I'm just going to glaze over this, just to darken it on the shadow side. And I also want to run a little bit of shadow under the eave. All this will help to add depth and dimension to your building. Just a few strokes along here. I'm going to put three birds in. So I hope you've enjoyed this picture of Bob Ross's uh, Amidst of Winter. It's painting Bob Ross in watercolour. Now if you want to check Bob's out, have a look at Bob's in oil painting and then have a look at this and you tell me whether I basically got the gist of it right. Now you get round to the best bit, this is where you get to sign it mount it and frame it. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, painting demonstration video. Uh, if you have I'll leave a link in the description box and it will take you straight to the other painting videos I've made for YouTube and please click the like button and subscribe for further painting videos. Once again thank you very much.